subject to just books, despite its somewhat sentimental title, Go Kiss the World, and its didactic subtitle, Life Lessons for the Young Professional, Shubhrit Bhakti's book is really quite different from the usual management guru stuff. His voice is completely real, and the twists and turns of his life and times are beautifully and sometimes very movingly articulated. Shubhrit Bhakti is co-founder of Mindtree Consulting, a leader in the IT industry and one of the most distinguished startups in our time. It's a wonderful book. It's got the sense of truth-telling particularly your beginnings uh, in the growing up as the son of a small-time civil servant mm -hmm. in the boondocks of Orissa and small towns and villages. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like in the 60s and 70s to really belong nowhere, out in the sticks? You know, it didn't feel like nowhere uh, because uh, uh, it, it was really wonderful to be raised in the tribal districts of Orissa. That's where most of my childhood was spent. Uh, first of all, it was nature at her best. So you had uh, green hills and you had uh, real rivers and uh, you had waterfalls and uh, you had this occasional uh, brush with wild animals. It was quite, quite wonderful actually. But limited opportunities. Yes. Uh, there was surely food enough on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, fighting for an education uh, for a way in the world mm -hmm. uh, was uh, a yes, tall that, order. Yeah, that was difficult because I remember we were being raised in Koraput uh, and uh, there were no primary schools nearby so I was homeschooled till the age of eight and uh, on one hand uh, you know you could call it a disadvantage but one was lucky that you had parents who really took great interest and by the time I was five uh, my parents had taught me four languages and uh, when you grow up in a situation like that, uh, you build uh, both innocence and intimacy. That becomes stock in trade for you. A uh, gift of love and of learning. But, yes, you could say uh, that. Going back to your first job, you started out as a lower division clerk. Yes. In, uh, in the Department <laughs> of Industries of Government of Orissa. In Bhubaneswar. Yes. And from there, to find an opening into the great big world outside it was really a leap into the dark. You, you became a management trainee at the Delhi Cloth Mills yes. in, in Delhi. Yes. Uh, how tough was it you uh, know, to make that jump? You know, uh, first of all, uh, um, those are the days that I was very driven by the statement by the mother at Pondicherry. I'm not a great worshipper of either Sri Aurobindo or the mother, but some of her statements were very uplifting. And I remember in 1976, I saw one of her calendars where she had the message, New Year message for her was, uh, blessed are those who take a leap into the future. And it was like it was written for me. So with that, when I arrived at the Hazrat Nizamuddin railway station with a trunk that my father had Pretty gifted penniless. Uh, well, maybe about 300 <laughs> rupees. <laughs> it wasn't penniless. But, uh, you know, you had this deep driving desire inside you to go and see and take on the world. So not for a moment did that upbringing cause me to feel that I'm lost, you know, that it will be a big challenge or the world is stacked up against me. One didn't have that feeling. One of the uh, great uh, readable aspects of your book is the character portraits you draw of colleagues, bosses, mm -hmm. uh, peers, and rivals. Mm -hmm. And as a young manager, you faced many challenging tasks, yes. including the task of breaking a strike yes. in a big cloth mill. Yes. Uh, but also, very demanding, difficult, uh, sometimes disagreeable bosses. Yes. And that remains a problem that all young, young professionals face today. Uh, how did you face up to nasty bosses, and how do you expect young, young managers to do so now? You know, uh, one of the, I, I did that very deliberately uh, because one of the things that uh, bothers me is that the current generation has not seen too much of difficulty. And as a result, you come into whatever profession you do, whether you are a journalist or a doctor or an engineer or whatever, and you think that life is a Barbie doll existence. Life is not a Barbie doll existence. And it is very important that rough interactions in life are front-loaded and not back-loaded. Uh, the Indian Air Force is a very nice saying. They always tell that you have to 
uh, sweat in peace so that you don't bleed in war. Okay? Now, if you look at the corporate world, there is no sweating in peace. As a youngster, only if you go through those not so pleasant experiences that they will help you to sharpen your worldview. One of the remarkable features about Go Kiss the World is uh, that it really tells you about the virtue of risk taking. Yes. And among the twists and turns of your life was really to jump in, pretty unawares, the nascent IT industry mm -hmm. in the 70s. Mm -hmm. That was another leap in the dark. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it was the, the story, the IT story was just beginning. Yes. You knew nothing about it. Yeah, I didn't know. Uh, yeah. And uh, what was it like when you joined the first startups? You know, first of all, uh, uh, you know, in, if you look at the year 1981, that's when I joined the IT industry. Um, even people like me didn't fully understand what is a computer and the power of computing is. But for me, it was a departure from a smokestack existence in a textile mill. And I choose the words with care here. For me, anything was an upgrade. Anything coming out from the pyramidical, hierarchical, tough textile industry. So it was an industry. escape as well as a challenge. Uh, I would call it an escape. I would, escape is a, is, 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 is a negative word. Okay? Uh, you can't escape from life. Okay. Uh, you need to step out sometimes maybe, but not really an escape. So in a sense, when I came out to see the IT industry, there was something in it, there was something magical in it. It was first of all very young. Okay. You came into workplace and you did not find people more than the age of maybe mid-30s. People like Shiv Nadar, Arjun Malhotra's of the world, uh, you know, these are Prem Shiv Dasan, is the people who built this, uh, this IT industry were all in their 30s. So it was a youthful industry, very different from the textile mill surrounding where you were dealing with uh, people twice the age. Your subordinates were twice your age. Uh, so, so there was the buzz yes. of something new in the air. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, so, you know, you, there was... Is, is your message really that the young professional has to keep his radar out there all the time yes. to feel what is new? Uh, what is going to be the future, the you, sunrise. You must have a sense of destiny and you have a, must have a feel for day after tomorrow. Too many of our people, brilliant, bright, young engineers coming out from IITs and IIMs, they're all too obsessed with tomorrow. My, my message is look for day after tomorrow because that's where the opportunity is. A quick last question, and that's about your move uh, as co-founder of Mindtree less than a decade ago. Mm -hmm. In nine years, Mindtree has really made its presence felt Thank you. as a remarkable new uh, uh, startup in, in, in an industry which has faced setbacks recently. Mm -hmm. What distinguishes it from its peers and rivals, indeed its, its bigger, bigger competitors? I think one of the most important thing that uh, made us different was that it was not one man's company. Uh, there were 10 co-founders. The second thing is this 10 co-founders had an aspiration to build a next generation company. The third thing that we were very clear about is that we will build a company on the premise of shared wealth creation and building a company with a social conscience. So once you do that, then you realize that you are actually not building a company. You are here building an institution when you build an institution, it's about the long haul, and the long haul makes you to think about many things upfront. You know, upfront. For example, you need to think through the mission, the vision, the core values of the organization. So none of those things, which actually come in the way of high performance, uh, you know, organizations, were uh, afterthoughts in our case which meant that as ups and downs happened, like you talk about the current softness of the market, which is really nothing compared to 9-11 and what it did to everybody, it, it jolted us, but it did not make us uh, you know, lose our balance. Shubhrata Bakshi, it's been a great pleasure talking to you. All the very best for your book. In my opinion, Go Kiss the World is really a lesson about life more than just for young professionals. Thank for you everyone. so much. It was such a pleasure to be in the studio with you today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's all for now, but I'll be back next weekend with another edition of Just Books. Until then, from all of us here at NDTV, goodbye.